speed kills once again for the San Diego Padres. And Tony Gwynn gets things started. Infield single, stolen base. And then you come racing around on that bloop by Adrian Gonzalez. Get things going for his 6-1 comeback win. Let me start with the atmosphere tonight. What's it like to be, and you guys have been in contention all year, but 40,000 in the house for a midweek game against the Dodgers. What's yeah, that feel? It's nice, man. It's real nice. You know, anytime, anytime, you, can get, anytime you can get, you know, the crowd rocking like that, you know, obviously when the Dodgers are in town, everybody likes to come to those games. So, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of disappointed our fans from the standpoint of when the Dodgers come to town and they fill the seats, we haven't been able to get any victories for them. So, uh, it was definitely nice, you know, to be able to come through like that. And, and I think it was really nice to be able to tack on those extra runs like that to kind of give everybody some breathing room and you know, relax and go play some baseball. Hiroki Kuroda had been so tough yeah. on, on the team through the first five innings, dominant one-hit baseball. You get a, a big bounding chopper there to shortstop to get things going. What did you see in that at bat? And then talk about when you were at first base. It really seemed like you disrupted his time. Yeah, you know, he, he, you know the first thing I noticed, you know, watching the game, you know, for the first five innings, he had been getting ahead with his, with his with his fastball or whatever he was throwing, he was getting ahead early. And, you know, so I went up there and wanted to be aggressive. And I think if you watch me play enough, you know, I'm not the most aggressive guy when it comes to the play. I like to see some pitches. But, you know, when he fell behind with the heater with the heater first pitch, you know, I knew he was going to come back with it. And he actually made a good pitch. It was like a two-seamer that was probably a ball off the plate. And, you know, I stayed on it long enough to uh, be able to, to put a good swing on it. You know, it hit off the end. And, you know, if you hit it in that area, with a call over there, man. You, you got to get on your horse. Cause, you know, not only can he can he get to a lot of balls, he has a, he has a rocket. So, uh, you know, it worked out. I was fortunate enough to, to get in there in time. Now you steal second base, and, and the Padres. I don't know if you noticed, but you're now 38 and eight stealing one or more bases in a game. What a, an amazing statistic, but it really does speak to what you guys need to do to be successful offensively. Yeah, it's funny. I think we're like 34 and 34 and 8 when we score more than five runs, something like that. So, you know, it all kind of goes hand, hand in hand. You know, when you get on first base, it's not necessarily about stealing the base. It's really about disrupting the timing of the pitcher. You know, he can't get into a good, comfortable mode where he can just get his get his, get his set and, and go make, make good pitches to the plate. So, uh, from that standpoint, point, I mean, it looked like I, I affected his timing a little bit, and it wasn't, and as far as the steal goes, it wasn't a straight steal, it was a hit and run, but I think by Dino actually missing the ball on a swing through it, it kind of disrupted, you know, Russell's uh, timing a little bit through getting rid of it, and he bounced, and I was able to get my hand in the time. Now, last thing, uh, you score on the Adrian Gonzalez blooper, and obviously you've already been asked about incredible read on that ball. How much of that is instinctual? How much of that is experiential? Being a center fielder yourself? How much of that is just as being out there and knowing, okay, I know where Kemp is, so I know where it's going to be? I think it, you know, I'm sure playing center field helps a little bit. Knowing your, your stadium helps a little bit. But for the most part, it's it's instincts and it's, you know, us checking the outfitters. You know, Hoppy stays on us about that when you're on second. Make sure you check the outfitters every pitch. And it just so happened that there were so many pitches thrown in between the time where I got to second and when he actually, Adrian actually put the ball in play that I had looked, it had to be over ten times at that point. So I had a really good visual uh, of, of where they were. So when it's hit, you know, you got to make the decision. Either you're going to trust your instincts at that point or you're going to play it safe. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I looked back there so many times. I just, I just in my heart, I didn't think he was going to be able to get to that ball. And he closed, it hung up in there a lot longer, and he closed on it a lot faster than I thought he would. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it played just how, how, you know, you practice it. You know, it fell in, and you were able to get that run to get us going a little bit. Great win, Tony. Thanks.